All right, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a product that's on the market and it's reasonably priced. You can kind of see it behind my head here. It's called Roberlo. Roberlo, let me go ahead and bring that up there. This is the hardener that you get with the clear. It's called Roberlo. Okay. This is the 5000, what is that? 5000 hardener. This is the standard hardener. And then I think they have a slow, a slow hardener. And then they also have a fast hardener. This is the medium hardener, which is usually used normally 99% of the time. And then the clear that we're talking about is called Superior 150 High Solids. This is a two to one high solid clear. That means it's two parts clear, one part hardener. And another thing that I'm going to go ahead and throw in there, you've got to add reducer with this because it's, it's like syrup. Now, I picked this up, I believe, for $130 for a gallon of uh, this, what is that, uh, one and a half gallon. This makes, almost, this makes two gallons of clear. So you get one and a half gallon of clear, a half a gallon of hardener, and then you have to purchase some um, reducer. So I'm not trying to advertise for these people. They didn't give me this clear, by the way. I had to buy this. These people don't even know who I am. I've never talked to anybody at this company. So what I did, I went ahead and painted a 64 Volkswagen with it. And I did an overall paint job. That means I laid all the base coat down on the whole car. And then I put the clear on the car. Now I used three full wet coats of clear. The instructions on this clear that I got, okay, from other shops that use it says if you're gonna have if you're gonna buff it out, you gotta wait three to four days to let this clear cure because if you go back in there and you try to do it the day after you paint it, it's still going to be a little tacky. You're going to get fingerprints on it. So it's basically like any other high solid clear. Um, if you use Concept 2020, you got to let it sit a couple days before you can buff it out because it's still tacky the next day, especially if you paint at night and then you go back in the morning and think that you're going to clear coat it. I mean buff it, it's not going to happen. Um, the only clear that you can do that with is a medium solid clear, which is what I normally use, and that's the MS-52 uh, matrix clear. But since uh, Sherwin-Williams has bought them out, I'm trying to shy away from matrix products because it's not the same. It's not the same as it was when matrix owned it, and I don't think even the chemicals are the same. But uh, back to the story here with Roberlo. So if you use this clear, uh, and you're going to paint an overall car, the whole thing, it works wonderful. But if you are going to spot paint the car like I've done on this one, and I still got to paint this fuel door, I haven't done it yet, but um, I spot painted this, that means that uh, there was some damage up here, I blended the paint in, I had to fix the door in front of us, there was some other damage over there, so I didn't paint the whole car, I just blended the paint in. And what happens when you blend paint and you're not putting a solid coat of paint on the panel, all right, when you're blending the paint in, even if you tack it down and put one last coat on it, you still got a reaction there where it's going to be rough in the area where you blended it. And what it causes is a, a reaction with the clear coat. Now, I put three full wet coats of clear on this. But the finish on this, once it cured and dried, where I blended the paint in, it is still dry. Now I got two choices. I can sand this down. And another thing I want to go ahead and show you, speaking of sanding, I usually start out with 1500 when I color sand. And then I go straight into 3000. With this clear, being such a high solid and a very hard clear to sand, I am actually relying on this one here is 1,000, but I'm actually in some spots I'm having to sand it with 800. Um, do I like to sand? No, but I like to do a high quality job. Another thing I like to do is save time. And when you're used to using 1,500, and you're, you know you're blocking this thing out, and it feels like a rock because that's what it feels like, and that's all high solid clears. There isn't one high solid clear that I've ever used that doesn't sand like a rock. So when you are painting an overall paint job, this stuff works wonderful. But when you're using a high solid 
clear and you are blending paint, my suggestion is that you should use a medium solid because it's not going to have the same reaction as it does with the high solids. Let me go ahead and squeegee this off and I'm going to show you what we're talking about and then you'll know. I get a lot of emails saying, hey, I painted this and I clear coated that and it came, it's real shiny here and it's real dry here. What happened? Well, if you didn't put a solid coat of paint down on top of your surface before you clear coat it, this is what happens. And you can kind of see in this area where I'm sanding it, you can see how rough it looks. Look how rough it looks and then when we come down here it even gets more cloudy. This whole panel all the way down. And this has three coats of clear on it. This is a three coat clear paint job that I applied to this. Now if you come back here, look how shiny it is in this area. Alright, see how shiny it is? Now watch the light when I move. You can see now it's getting cloudy again. And that's because I blended paint into this area. I blended paint into it and it uh, left a dry surface from the paint. And this is what the reaction is. This is part of the reaction. You can see up here where I blended it in. Alright, and this here looks pretty good. But it's still going to need a little bit of color sand and buffing. We can probably get that out with 1500. But I'm having to use 800 and 1000 to sand this out because if I don't, I'll be here for three days sanding it with 1500. And we got a lot of sanding to do. So what clear do I like the best? What kind of clear does my friend Pete like? I like a medium solid, high quality medium solid clear. The reason I like a high quality medium solid clear is because it goes on good, it stabilizes itself, and it's also easy to color sand and buff. When you get into these high solid clears, I'm sorry, I, did I say high solid? I like a medium solid. I like medium, uh, a high quality medium solid clear. But when you get into these high solid clears, when it says HS on the can, and you got to use this much hardener when it's a two to one mix instead of a, uh, 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 what would it be, a four to one mix, all right, when you're getting into this situation, you know, this is for overall paint jobs. This isn't for collision repairs. This isn't for um, blending, this, that, and the other, unless you want that high solid clear and you want to do this kind of work to finish it out. Um, this is a lot of sanding, okay? Because once I get done with this little section here using the uh, 1000, then I'm going to have to come back and sand it down with 1500 and then hit it with my DA with 3000. So, I mean, it's just a lot of work, but if you want that high solid clear on there and you want the best finish that you can uh, get, and we're talking about blending now, we're not talking about overall. Like I said, if you do an overall paint job, then you don't have this problem. Now the Volkswagen that I painted using this clear, I didn't even have to buff it. I think there was two or three spots I had to buff out, and that was it. It was done. It came out beautiful. It was a mirror finish. But when you get into this type of repair work with painting, I suggest that if you're not working on a high-end vehicle like this and the customer doesn't request it, to use a medium solid clear and not the high solid clears just due to the fact that it's easier to work with, it's easy to buff out, and you don't have all this headache of sanding and buffing and sanding and you can hear it, listen to that. You can hear how rough it is. And how do you get that out? You pretty much keep sanding it until you can't hear it. And then you come back and you hit it with 1500. It's a big job. But somebody's got to do it, I guess. And I'm not going to say I get the big bucks because I don't. I'm just a working stiff guy, just like you, and I pay my bills. Um, I actually came across a guy that I restored a car for, a pickup truck, and he owned an air conditioning company. 
and our air conditioner went out of our house and I asked him to put it in and he went ahead and did that um, he put it in we kind of traded out but I said how much is it going to be I, and he says what do you drive and I said what does that matter he says well if you drive a Volkswagen then I'm going to charge you this much but if I pull up in your house and I see a Rolls Royce there then it's this much and I said look dude you already know what I drive how much is it you know I thought that was kind of bullshit but anyway I'm over here color sanding and then I'm going to buff and that'll be later on now I will say that a high solid clear is a little bit harder to buff it takes a little bit more buffing to get it done and if you're not doing an overall car my suggestion is you stay away from high solid clears you don't even mess with them let's see what it looks like now when you sand the clear out when you're sanding the clear you can see where you missed and it looks like we got all of the dry out of it um, I wouldn't call this orange peel this is an orange peel this is just dry clear so there's a difference um, if you put the clear on and it gets real lumpy and you know get an orange peel and put it up there that's called orange peeling and that's another reason I don't uh, I don't blend the clear in I would rather go ahead and clear the whole panel even if I have to do this to it to get it done right then worry about later on the clear peeling off there's a lot of people out there to do that this is Pete my friend Pete your friend Pete trying to give you a little bit of advice here on different clears out there one more thing I'd like to say about clear coating this is really really important is once you buy a clear okay like let's say you go with this Roberlo and it's a very I like this clear it's really really good believe it or not I'm not cutting the product down it's basically like any other high solid like we explained but once you get a clear that you like and it's in your price range you should stick with that clear forever you shouldn't bounce back and forth and say oh I'm gonna try this clear Ooh, I'm gonna try that because your clear coat is actually a tool in your shop you're gonna get used to using this you're gonna you're gonna get used to how the gun sprays you're going to get used to how to mix it properly and after you eventually do several jobs with it all right this clip the clear that you use all the time will be a consistent of it's getting better 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 I have it mastered and this I don't have to do as much work to it this is Pete my friend Pete your friend Pete do it right do it right do it right because if you aren't doing it right then you ain't doing it at all bitch Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.